Wow, I feel like I'm some bad. I stood here and then everything just got quiet. So, good morning to each of you. And we thank God for this another day he's given us. Truly, it is a blessing. And we just thank God for giving us this opportunity just to share in his goodness for he has been good to us. We thank him for the love of his son and that he gave his life for us. Most importantly, we're thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit. For truly we need God in these times. Our church family has suffered a lot of loss. There's a lot of sickness. I just feel the need before we even go into our worship this morning, I just feel the need for us to come to the altar, pray for our family, pray for our church family, pray for those loved ones who have suffered loss. The reality is that it could have been you. It could have happened on your street. It could have come to your door. And the reality is that if it came to the church family, it, it came to our door. There's some things that happens in life that if you put yourself into those situations, you ask yourself, how could you handle it? Or how, how would you react? Or you can't even fathom what it would be like. But yet there's somebody you know that's going through something such as that. And you can't even imagine how you could perceive it or receive it. It's, but it's life. And it's real. And if we keep living, we're going to experience some things that we never thought we would. And we're going to ask that question. How do I go from here? Why me? Why, Lord? And if you haven't been there, y'all know what my grandmama would say. Keep a living. May not be you today, but if you keep living, you're going to experience heartache. You're going to experience suffering. You're going to experience pain. And we don't like that, but if we live in these earthen bodies, we're going to experience it because of sin. Because of sin, every emotional tie we have is connected to sin. That's why we grieve. That's why we have pain. That's why we have sorrow. It was never the intention of God. But because of one man's disobedience, now we have to shed tears of sorrow. Now we have to see loved ones go on home. Now we have to suffer heartache and pain as long as we live. There will come a time. The Bible says that there are going to be a new heaven and a new earth. For the former things are going to be passed away. He said there'll be no more death, no more crying, no more tears. For God himself, this is what y'all need to know, God himself shall wipe all tears from our eyes. But while we're here, we're going to have to shed some tears. But one day, there'll be no more crying. One day, there'll be no more sorrow. One day, there'll be no more death. I'm looking for that day. But while I'm here, I need the Lord's help to make it from one degree of grace to the next. I need the Lord's help. And somebody here this morning need God's help today. I need him to make it from one step to the next. And the only way I can make it is to put it in his hand. So we come today to put it in God's hand. Because the Bible says he's able to keep you from falling. Just when you thought you was about to lose your mind, I come to share some good news this morning. We serve a God who's able. I wish I had somebody this morning that knew he was able to keep us from losing our natural mind. He's able this morning.
To the Douglas family, he's able. To the Fleming family, he's able. To the Holmes family, he's able. To Miss Barbara's family, he's able. And to you out here today, he's able. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come as little children before a kind father. And Lord, we know that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your spirit. We ask now in the name of your son Jesus that you would move right now on the hearts of your people. Move right now on the minds of your people. Move right now in the life of these your people. For we come this morning realizing that we need you and we can't make this journey without you. Lord, our church family has suffered loss. Our church family has suffered heartache. Our church family is suffering pain right now. But we know we serve a God that if we take our burdens before you, you're able to comfort us in a lonely hour. You're able to bring peace to a troubled mind. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you would do it right now for the Jeffries family, that you do it right now for the Douglas family, that you do it right now for the Fleming family, that you would do it right now for the Pearson family, that you would do it right now for the Holmes family, that you would do it right now. For we, your people who stand at your altar right now, because we know that you are able. Bless now. All over this place. Our going out and our coming in. For we come right now to leave it at your feet. And declare victory in your name. We walk by faith. Not by what we see. For we know that in due time. All things work together. For the good of them who love you. And those who are called according to your purpose. Lord, we know that there's a purpose for us going through. But while we're going through. You used to sing a song. Walk with me. Lord, walk with me. Whilst I'm on this tedious journey. I want you, Jesus, to walk with me. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Please hold my hand. Whilst I'm on this tedious journey. Lord, I need you. Hold my hand. Guide my feet, Lord. Guide my feet. Whilst I'm on this tedious journey. You tease us sometime. But we ask for your strength now. In the name of Jesus. And we're going to leave this altar. Declaring victory. Believing it's already done. In your name. We're not going to lose no sleep about it. We're going to walk like you already doing it in our lives. We're going to claim victory. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke the devil right now. And all of his tricks, we rebuke him right now. For you said in your word that whatsoever you told us this, you said you give us the keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever we bind on earth, you shall bind in heaven. And whatsoever we loose on earth, you declare that you loose in heaven. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus. We'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. For it is in Jesus' name. That we ask it all this morning. Thank you Lord. Amen. And amen. Somebody celebrate the Lord. In this place. And leave this altar. Believing by faith. In the name of Jesus. It's already done. Amen. Hallelujah. This time we're going to ask. As we assemble together. 
we're going to ask Deacon James Croom if he would come and lead us in devotion on this morning. Give Deacon Croom a hand as he come in his own way. Pastor stated, today is um, a bittersweet day for me. Uh, it's bitter because of the passing of my cousin, Fred Douglas. But it's sweet because another thing the pastor said, that God is able. Yeah. And I know that the God that, that I serve is able. Yeah. <laughs> He's able to give you strength, yes, comfort, and peace. Yes, He's an all-knowing God. And I thank you, Lord, for your comfort and peace. Our scripture today, in accordance to that, comes from Psalms 139. And it reads, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar of off. Yes, Thou compassest my path and my lying down, mm -hmm. and art acquainted with all of my ways. Yes. For there is not a word in my tongue, mm. but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Yes. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid, and laid thy hands upon me. Mm. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. <laughs> it is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into the heaven, thou art there. If, I'm, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the othermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night be light about me. Yea, the darkness hide it from thee, but the night shine it as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. I read for you Psalms 139, verses 1 through 12. May the Lord have a blessing on the readers, the hearers, and most certainly the doers of his holy word. May we pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, it's once again, dear Lord, that we come before thy throne, asking forgiveness of our sins and trespasses, dear Lord. We come, dear Lord, giving you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Father, for last night's laying down. We thank you this morning for this morning's uprising, dear Lord. We ask, Father, that you be with us and be for us, dear Lord. We ask, Father, that you would go to the hospitals, dear Lord. I know we are already there, but let those know that you are a comforter. You are a healer. Father, we ask that you heal us here today. Everybody under the sound of my voice, dear Father, I ask that you would bless us, Father. Touch us, dear Lord. We need you, Father. We need you every second of every day. We need you, Lord. So please, dear Father, be with us. Lead us and guide us, Father. Help us to be, get through this, this tragedy, dear Lord. Well, it's not a tragedy, dear Father, because you know everything, and you're in control of everything, Father. So we thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for another day, Father. Thank you for this day, a day that we've never seen before. Father, it's in the ho your holy name that I ask this and I pray. Thank you, Father. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory, honor, and praise, Father. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for this morning's hymn.
Midday Manor and Spiritual Enrichment will resume this Wednesday, January the 9th. Macedonians, give your name to Sister Kay Kroon if you would like a copy of your personal 2018 financial report. Your report will be ready for pickup in the finance office on Sunday, January the 13th. The Mother's Board will meet at the church on Monday, January the 7th at 3 p.m. The trustees will meet Tuesday, January the 8th at 6 p.m. There will be a senior urshers meeting on Saturday, January the 12th at 10 a.m. If you know of any members who are sick and shut in, please call the church office and let us know. Funeral services for Mr. Fred Douglas Jr will be held here today starting at 1.30. Please keep the family in your thoughts and prayers. Funeral services for Mrs. Betty Pearson will be held on tomorrow, January the 7th at Babel Hill Missionary Baptist Church in Cedar Grove, Tennessee at 2 p.m. Visitation will be this evening from 6 to 8 at Dill Day Carter funeral home in Huntington, Tennessee. Also, please keep the family in your thoughts and prayers. And also, please continue to keep Brother Carl Jeffries in your prayers. His sister was eulogized on this past Friday. Now, will all of our first-time visitors please stand? Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Reginald Curry, First Lady Sharon, and the anti-Macedonia family, I would like to welcome you to our service on this morning. We are so excited that God led you to worship with us on today. And if you are looking for a church home, please prayerfully consider Macedonia for your place of worship. Thank you, and please do come again. Thank you, Sister Thompson, for those announcements. We ask if you would please, sir, and please, ma'am, govern yourselves according to the announcements. Good morning again, Macedonia. And to all of our friends and loved ones come to share with us on this morning. We certainly do thank God for your presence. We hope something will be said or done this day that would further your walk with Christ. Uh, as we stand today, is there anyone celebrating a birthday today, uh, January the 6th through the 12th? Anyone celebrated a birthday this week? I mean, if, you, if you're in January, you're in good company. I just want you to know. Oh, happy birthday, Ma. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, anybody in January, I just want you to know you're in good company. But, you know, so you don't have to be ashamed to stand if it's in January because that's a good month. So those of you who celebrate birthdays this week, we want you to know that we certainly celebrate with you and every opportunity that you have to see another year of your birth. Uh, is a blessing, and so we celebrate with you and say happy birthday. Thank uh, all of those who participated in watch night services on this past uh, week. Tell you, it was a really, really powerful night, and we thank God for uh, just uh, doing what he does best, and that is allow his Holy Spirit to dictate all that takes place, and certainly we were blessed by the presence of God on that night, and truly we thank God for uh, watch night service. Let us not forget again that coming up in the month of February, the 17th, we will celebrate, uh, Sister Curry and I will celebrate our first year anniversary here at Macedonia. And so we encourage you to, um, we encourage you to uh, be with us and, and share with us and certainly invite others to come to share with us on that day. We have uh, uh, some great speakers coming for both the morning and the afternoon, and so we want you to come and be blessed uh, through the hearing and preaching of the Word of God. For truly, yes, we thank God for another for a year that He's allowed us to be here, but we are also thanking God for the opportunity to hear another word from the Lord. Amen. For truly, you need to know that in times such as these, uh, you have to realize that you know we we have to have a word uh, to encourage us. Uh, to just go a little further because it's not going to get easier. Let me just tell you that. But you can do all things, the Bible tells us. 
uh, through Christ who gives us who gives us the strength. And so we're just thankful and grateful to God for his strength. Let us uh, not forget to keep those families who have uh, suffered loss and those who are sick. Uh, we ask that you would continue to keep them in your prayers, the Douglas family, the Jeffries family, uh, the Fleming and the Pearson family, uh, and also the Holmes family. Keep them in your prayers for truly, I know that there are others and many that are still in the hospital. Please keep Miss Phyllis Ratliff uh, in your prayers. Uh, she's really going through, and we ask that you would continue to keep her lifted before the Lord because truly, again, uh, as I said earlier this morning, uh, it could be, it could have been you. And uh, we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. It might be you. And so please be careful uh, and be prayerful uh, that, you know, God will keep you and keep those who yet may be going through uh, some rough times in these times. And so we just ask that you continue to pray for one another. Uh, certainly looking forward to Wednesday's uh, Midday Manor and, and spiritual enrichment on Wednesday evening. So we're encouraging each of you to come and share with us, if not during midday, uh, at least come and share with us on, on Wednesday evening at 6.30, 6, 6 o'clock prayer, uh, 6.30 uh, teaching session. So we just encourage you to come and be with us. Uh, you know, if you're making the excuse that you got to go home and cook, well, you don't have to do that. Uh, we'll have something for you. It may not be what you cook at the house, uh, but it'll stop your stomach from growling. So uh, don't use that as an excuse, but make sure that you come and be with us and, and, and share with us in the word of God. Brother Worth. If you all didn't hear that, uh, John and the love of his life, Miss Sally. Uh, you know, don't mess with Sally because uh, John be watching. I want y'all to know John be watching now. He may not say much, but he be watching because he, he love him some Sally. Uh, they've celebrated 66 years, uh, a wedding anniversary, so we celebrate with you all. Certainly celebrate. Uh, 66 years is a long time. It's a lifetime. And uh, truly to see you all uh, in good health and to see you all in your right minds and loving one another as you do is truly a blessing. And we thank God for you all are truly examples to a lot of us. And so we thank God uh, that he's allowed us to be able to witness uh, your 66. So we say congratulations to you. Amen. With that being said, again, this is a wonderful uh, time for us to just come together. The first Sunday in a new, brand new year. And truly we're grateful to God for allowing us this privilege to come and be a part of the first Sunday of a new year. Officers, if you would, at this time, prepare your hearts to receive the offering, for we come now to worship our God in our giving. For what a blessing it is for God to give us this privilege, this opportunity. Number one, he gave us a uh, resource by which uh, we are to receive finance, and we know that he is the source, but he's given us resources by which we are able to receive finance. And with that, he says, uh, if you give a portion of that back unto me, he says, I'll give back unto you. Uh, he didn't say uh, exactly how much, but he said in uh, one verse that in Malachi, he said he'd open up windows of heaven and pour out blessings. Then he also said in the Gospels, he'd give it to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He says, men will give back unto you. All we have to do is be, do our part. Uh, and God is never short of his word. And grandmama said it like this, you can't beat. Y'all know what I'm talking about. God's giving. I don't care how hard you try, you can't beat his giving. For the more you give, uh, the more he'll give unto you. And so we just keep on giving because we believe his word is really true. With that being said, let us thank God in advance for these gifts if you have your seed in your hand, let us just bless God and thank God in advance for these gifts. Father God, we come before you now to thank you for this privilege of worshiping you in our giving. We ask now, God, that you would just bless the gift and the giver. For we know that someone here today doesn't have anything to give. But we pray, oh God, that you would, uh, Lord, allow them the privilege to be able to give when that opportunity presents itself again. And so we come now to give unto you, asking, oh God, that uh, as we give, we ask, oh God, that the same way the sun lifted the few fishes and the loaves and you multiply, Lord, we lift this offering before you now. 
that you may multiply it, that it may continue to do the work of this ministry. Again, bless the gift and the giver. Let what is about to be received be used for the purpose in which it is given. And we pray, O oh God, that those who are about to give would not suffer in their giving, but that you would return according to your word. Blessings unto them. Thank you now for this opportunity to worship you in giving. For we give you all honor, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Officers, it's in your hand.
morning, church. I didn't realize that I left practice last Thursday that this song is a personal song to me. I called my mother the other night and told her I had been sleeping. And she said, why, sister? I said, Ma, there's so much stuff going on, so much death going on, so many things going on. She said, sister, all you got to do is pray. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. So much trouble. I feel like going back home today. Ah, oh, amazing grace, how sweet. The sound 
through through me the living God fall on us fall so fresh right now master that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart that it might be acceptable in your sight for you are our strength you are our redeemer hide us now behind yonder cross where your people will see more of you less of me Send down the type of anointing right now that would make preaching easy and would allow we, your people, to be hearers of your word. Not only hearers, but when we leave this place, we shall become doers as well, giving you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. For it is in Jesus' name that we ask it all. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles from the gospel quoted by St. John, fourth chapter, uh, there you shall find in John's gospel, the fourth chapter, a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, it is our attempt um, this morning to read verses 5 through 16, uh, but you need to keep your Bibles open as we're going to journey all the way down to verse 30. But just for our reading this morning, some of y'all don't like to stand long. And just for your reading, for the text, we shall read verses 5 through 16. Are we there? The original King James of version of the Bible reads in John chapter 4, beginning with verse 5, these words. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called. Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is, that saith to thee, give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, 
and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go. Call thy husband and come hither. Thank you. We'll stop right there. Keep your Bibles open, but I want to use for a thought this morning as the Spirit will allow us. What a man. What a man. What a mighty good man. I want to use for a thought this morning as the Spirit allows us. What a man. What a man. What a mighty good man. And if you really know him, you really know what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about uh, that secular song that... Uh, and I know that's what goes through your mind, but when I think about a man who changed my life, uh, I'm not thinking about a natural man, but when I think about the one who woke me up this morning, I realize that it wasn't me that got up, but it was him that woke me this morning. When I think about that man, it causes me to say, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. When I look at me compared to him, and realize that I'm not nothing with, without him, but I can do anything with him, I start saying to myself, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. When I'm sick and know I can't heal myself, but I can call on somebody that's able to heal me, and I know who he is, I began to think about him, and I just began to say, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Listen, when I can't solve the problem, but I can put it in the problem solver's hand, somebody going to get it in a minute. I just began to say, what a man. What a man, what a, what a mighty good man. And it's because I have a relationship with him. I, I know him for myself. I, I remember grandmama telling me about him. I remember mama, mama telling me I need to get to know him. But it wasn't until I got to know him for myself, Randolph, when I had some days where I had to shed some tears. I had some troubles in my life. And I needed somebody to help me. And mama couldn't help me. And daddy couldn't help me. Big mama couldn't help me. And all of a sudden, I found myself going down on my knees and saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, for there's no other help I know. It's when I learn how to pray, it's when I learn how to have a relationship with the Lord. And it's something about having a relationship with Jesus that trumps all other relationships because there's nobody like him. I wish there was somebody here this morning that would wake up and shake your neighbor and high five them and elbow them or let them know something. Let them know, listen, we serve a God that's worthy to be praised. And when we look back over our lives and see how far the Lord has brought us and realize we didn't bring ourselves, but we got here because of a mighty good man, then we ought to give our God some praise because our God is worthy. So when this text came to me, it didn't have nothing to do with a natural man. But it had everything to do with that man from Galilee that loved me so much that one Friday evening, in case I don't get there, he loved me enough that he allowed nails to be put in his hand. Loved me enough that he didn't even argue, didn't even put up a fight. He allowed him to put rivets in his feet. Didn't cuss him out, didn't say anything. The Bible said it didn't even say a mumbling word, but they allowed him to pierce him in the side. And gave his life for us. Not, not that they didn't take his life, but he decided to give his life. Lay down his life for you and for me. See, y'all really don't get that. But you don't know anybody around you that's willing to really lay down their life for you. But Jesus said this before he went on to glory. He said, no greater love than this. Than if a man lay down his life for his friend. He was the only one willing to lay down his life. And he was the only one that was capable of forgiving us of our sins because he knew no sin. The record is that he took on sins of the world for us. And now we can go to God in prayer and be forgiven of sin, but it's about having a relationship. And listen, I come to share with you today, 2019, if you don't have a relationship with him, I really came to tell you this morning that 2019 is a good year. 
to have a relationship with him. If you hadn't had one with him in 2018, if you didn't have one with him in 2017, 